Ladies and gentlemen, we, people of color, daughters and sons of immigrants, we belong to Europe. I am, we are the story of Europe. Hello everybody and welcome to this new episode of We Belong, the podcast that gives a voice to the new daughters of Europe. I am Yasmina Wiran and I am your host and today we are here at the European Parliament and we are joined by a Dutch MEP, member of the European Parliament. She is uh, very inspiring for many of us and her name is Samira Rafaela. I'm very happy to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you so much and welcome. Thank you. Um, Samira, I mean, we've been following your journey since your election mm -hmm. and we believe that uh, your presence is um, uh, very important in the European Parliament. You touch some topics that are very dear for us and we belong, such as inclusion, diversity, social justice. Uh, but tell us, what is one word that best describes you as a person or your work here at the Parliament? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And yet that's always very crucial to think about when you're in the position that I'm having now. And one word that comes up in my mind, and that's a word that I use often, that is representation. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that I sit at the table so that I can represent voices that are not at the table so often or sometimes they are just not sitting here at all. And that's really what I would like to represent. Thank you. And I mean, this special series at the European Parliament is focused on representation mm -hmm. and having you here with us, sitting with us, taking the time to speak about it, it means a lot. As you say, representation is important. You have been just being present. By being present, you have been sharing a huge message. But you just didn't stop there. You have also been quite vocal mm -hmm. on matters that concern all of us. So thank you for that, first of all. But I want to also maybe talk about your experience because you grew up in, in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be uh, an Afro-Caribbean uh, descendant mm -hmm. growing up in the Netherlands and then becoming, of course, first member of the European Parliament from the Netherlands with Afro-Caribbean mm -hmm. like, uh, roots. Yeah. So, I mean, I remember very well that I grew up in a little village together with my, my brother. Um, and and you, could, you could always notice us. I mean, uh, there was not a lot of diversity in the area where we grew up or in the schools that, that, we, are, that we were sitting in. So, um, and then when we came home, we had, you know, a very diverse world. I mean, we had different cultures, religions mm. at home. Um, and so I grew up with a very diverse mindset. Mm. So it was really double, you know. So you go outside of your house. Uh, when you go to school, you notice that you are a little bit unique. Um, but when you go home, it's a completely different world. So it was sometimes very difficult to combine these two worlds. Um, but, and at the same time, I... I try to transform it into a positive mission, a positive ambition. Uh, I have, you know, the best of different worlds. Um, and this is something that I use now as a skill in my work. Uh, so indeed, I am very involved also with the overseas counties and territories because I also want the Caribbean part of the kingdom of the Netherlands to be represented very well and strongly. Um, and at the same time, I, I make sure that uh, that I can be a voice to people in the Netherlands, to people in Europe. Um, yeah, depending also on the topics that I'm working on and that, that I find very important, mm. yeah. Absolutely, and I think that, as you say, uh, growing up in a multicultural uh, environment, mm -hmm. but also understanding that you are different, you wanted also to make um, this difference a strength. Mm -hmm. So that's what you say by working here and bringing your different backgrounds at the table and supporting the Netherlands with their international uh, relationships with the Caribbean countries. Yes. It's also a way of making your uh, diversity a strength. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what we promote that we belong. We want to make sure that people understand that being different, it's not 
a challenge. It can be a challenge, but it should not be only a difficulty. It should be also an opportunity. No. And it's also important to realize that you are not different everywhere. So um, the reason why I like to be part of the European Parliament is because I have the feeling sometimes that people understand me better in this world. Uh, I have a diverse background, but here in the Parliament you are dealing with different cultures, even though there is a lack of diversity when it comes to uh, the members of European Parliament or uh, the staff and the advisors. I mean, in the workforce uh, itself, I think we should do more about diversity. But, um, you know, having such international uh, environment makes me really happy and I can tell that people really appreciate the intercultural sensitiveness, mm -hmm. sensitiveness that I also bring in, in for example, uh, negotiations. So I, I feel very much at home here. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's the, the motto of the European Union, united in diversity mm -hmm. and bringing 27 countries all together mm -hmm. to share a common vision. It's already, you know, a great uh, ambition. And so for also people who are born and raised in Europe to be accepted, and as you said at the beginning, represented, I think it's also very important. And knowing that um, you are a woman very vocal uh, on uh, you know, matters such as anti-racism, mm -hmm. and I know that last year, um, actually in 2020, when George Floyd was killed, uh, a resolution was passed yes. countering uh, anti the anti-racism resolution to denounce and condemn racism. And it is a European matter too, even mm -hmm. though we should, of course, distinguish it from the U American context. We have uh, post-colonial matters, we have inequalities in Europe that make a lot of people not feel, feel included and represented. So what do you think is important at your level, because you're an MEP and you have a mandate, what is your priority here at the Parliament on this matter on yeah. racism? Yeah, so my priority is really that uh, we implement the anti-racism action plan uh, launched by the European Commission uh, very soon and as much as possible. So I think the action plan that we're having now is a really good sign and it's a really good opportunity to effectively fight ra racism and discrimination in Europe. Um, especially when it comes to monitoring and evaluating whether the member states have mm. implemented anti-racism and anti-discrimination legislation effectively. Um, that's a very important thing to do. Also, the member states need to present their own national action plans on mm. how to fight uh, racism in their own member states. Um, given a, a survey that we recently had, um, because, for example, racial profiling in Europe is still strongly um, present. And also in my own member state, we have specifically an issue with racial profiling. So there are some member states that are not doing well in certain areas uh, when fighting racism and discrimination. So that's, very, that's now one of my priorities, to make sure that the member states come with the national action plans. We can mm. put pressure from the parliament uh, towards the member states, but also towards the European Commission to implement their own action plan very well. So this is, this is what we will do um, for the upcoming uh, time um, in, in, in Europe. But it's also a priority is, is to me, given the Dutch benefit scandal uh, that we had, um, that's, that we need to carefully look, on, look at how we are making use of ethnicity or race being part mm -hmm. of risk profiles that are being used by authorities, uh, mm -hmm. take for example uh, police authorities. Um, and I actually want a European uh, country, so I want the member states to actually stop doing um, that. Uh, because it's really the reason why so many uh, people in Europe are being discriminated and excluded. Um, so I, I hope that I can make uh, a big point out of that. Mm. Of course, there is a lot of um, ambition. And as you said, you want to see concrete achievements. Mm -hmm. uh, a resolution has to be translated into an action plan. The action plan is here. We want to see also the national uh, level. 
and hopefully the local level. So it is a very important step to take. But of course, the member states need also to, to, to follow up. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your commitment. And I think you being here every day or most of the days um, and working on those matters because you feel concerned by them, mm -hmm. it is, um, you know, very, very crucial. And I hope many more um, young women will uh, join the European Parliament in the future as members of the European Parliament, at least I hope one per, one per country, per member states, will be at least a good achievement. People of color, as I, as I, I mean. So it's important that representation is not only, um, you know, we, that we don't talk about people of color only when there is issues or when mm -hmm. there is, you know, because there is inequalities in France, that's often the case, but then we also offer them a space. And this is why, um, for us, it's a priority to make sure that for the next, next elections, more people of color are uh, running for mm -hmm. campaign uh, for, uh, for elections. So what is uh, for you a way, a good way that the European Parliament and the parties, because at the end of the day, it's also a work behind the scenes that the parties nationally and locally can do to attract more diverse talents? Mm -hmm. So the political parties are very responsible for producing um, diverse candidate lists. I mean, it all starts, you know, inside the party um, and making sure that they use other kinds of recruitment and selection tools to attract um, different people with different profiles. I mean, at the end, if the political parties manage to promote uh, and present a diverse candidate list, then you will see the same representation here in the parliament mm -hmm. or in the national parliaments or even hopefully in the council. Uh, I mean, we also need more people of color um, in, in the different governments of, of the member states. So it's very important to start with the political parties. It's of course very important that politicians feel responsible to uh, engage with especially young people, um, with young, uh, young people also from diverse backgrounds mm -hmm. to inspire them, to encourage them uh, to enter politics and also to, to function as a, as a role model, as a mentor to them inside the party so that they can be mm -hmm. guided exactly. um, towards the, the top of, of, of the organization. Absolutely. So what would you say is your personal commitment on this cause? Um, at the national level or at mm -hmm. your at your at your level through yeah. your network. Well, I hope that I'm I'm already doing that. I mean, I, I pay special attention to uh, young, talented people also in my own party. Um, you know, I, I I try to offer them also um, certain certain roles uh, in my office, for example, or to engage with them in other kinds of activities. So I find it very important that I expose the the young talent. Uh, mm. in my own party and uh, I also go to school so I visit schools a lot in the Netherlands uh, to talk to young people about politics and to talk about their ambitions but mm. also the concerns and worries they have mm. in society uh, so this is this is a way and uh, yeah I'm trying to promote and encourage them as much as possible through all the channels that I have access to thank also through you. social media and thank yeah. you for that and I mean for me it's very crucial to start at, the, at an early age and as you say going Mm -hmm. to schools, educating them, showing them that it's possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me it was a question that I wanted to ask you, but I think that you just by being here and doing your job every day, it's already given a lot. Thank you. You exist as a role model, no, I really believe this, because you exist as a role model and you show to other people that want to run, that they can do it. Mm -hmm. So to everyone that is listening here, well, um, you have here a uh, role model, as many that we portray at We Belong, women that uh, achieve milestones, but also that open doors mm -hmm. and make sure that other women can enter. And thank you for that. Thank you. And so just as we close, we want to have one piece of advice mm -hmm. that you would give to a young woman that is, can be anywhere in Europe, but she is looking for maybe running for the elections mm -hmm. or even just um, getting into 
um, an organization, a political organization or whatever, just committing herself and putting herself also on the arena because mm -hmm. that's what you do on, the, on your job. So what is one advice that you would give to her? Mm -hmm. I think it's very important to not uh, adapt yourself. So what I, what I see happening sometimes is that especially young women are struggling with the demands that are coming from society or the direct environment, uh, especially when they are working in a male-dominated environment. And it's really important that you stay true to yourself um, and that you are aware of the insecurities that are often caused by what the society demands mm -hmm. from us or how the society has grown. Um, so be aware of the insecurities that you have and be very careful about also projecting these insecurities on, on yourself, yeah. on others, uh, because it's sabotaging you uh, in a way that, that you will be less effective. So just be out there, be outspoken, um, and don't don't mind all these you know labels mm. uh, that are specifically for men or women. They tell you. Yeah. I mean, it's fine to be assertive um, and to be to be dominant mm. um, and to be strong. So yeah, and and then and then what's also very important is to to not be jealous. Uh, you know, when we speak about women helping women. It's very important that we are not jealous, jealous of each other, that we are supportive, that we encourage each other. Um, and there is, you know, one golden rule. If we really want to foster emancipation of women, um, we should stop with publicly attacking each other. Let's Do you just, face this? Yes. At your, yes. Yeah. Yes. So mm. let's just stop with that mm. even if we would come from different perspectives mm. um, let's 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 stay true to yourself and respect the other woman and help her uh, and if you don't want to help her at least keep yourself in a neutral position so that Absolutely. you know at the end we will be way stronger if mm -hmm. more and more women of course uh, come in and it's such positions. an important topic we had also an interview similar topic completely different profile mm -hmm. of a woman that doesn't feel uh, supported by other women in the same field, in the mm -hmm. industry. It's a music industry. And so it is essential that because we have, you know, a difficulty being a woman, mm -hmm. that's a, a matter of fact, there is more men than women in positions of power. At least the few that are here, we need to make sure that we support each other. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Thank you for the strength and the motivation you give to young women by sharing this message and thank you for your work and thank for being you. with us. Thank you. This was the end of our episode and you can find us on all platforms and on social media. Bye.